Amen. That was originally planned to be a trio with me and the two ladies, but I couldn't make it to the rehearsal this morning, so I thought they'd be okay without me. And they did fine. That was great. You did fine. <laughs> no, that's not true. Man, Daniel rocked those drums, didn't he? That was some kind of fantastic. Minister George, thank you. Jeremy, thank you. Everybody, is Jalen back there? Anybody else back there? Rashawn is back there? Playing, playing the, Rashawn? He was playing the bass today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's fantastic. Thems are all our kids. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you have your Bibles with you? Hold them up and say, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'll never, never, never doubt this word because it is the word of God. I've got ears to hear, hard to receive. So teach to me the word of God. So I believe it. I receive it into my life right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. On this Christmas Eve morning, let us turn to Luke chapter 1, reading of the Annunciation to Mary by the angel about the coming birth of Christ. Luke chapter 1 will begin in verse 26. And I want to talk this morning about the increase of his kingdom. The increase of his kingdom. Luke 1 and 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice! Highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. And then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. And will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And the church said, Amen. amen. And Amen. Christmas is a celebration of the birth of Christ, the Anointed One. Christmas is a celebration of the birth of our Savior. Thank God we needed one. Christmas is the celebration of the incarnation of God into humanity. It's the only way the gospel works. But Christmas is also the celebration of a king who established a kingdom. Come on, I'm going to need better amens today. In fact, when the Magi approached Herod the Great, they said to him, We have seen his star. Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have come to worship him. He is the king of the Jews. That's why we love Israel so much. But he's not just king of the Jews. He is king of kings. And Lord of Lords, if there was any king on this earth, he is above that king. He is the king, the king of all other kings, glory to God. And at the mention of his name, all the other kings, they'll bow their knee and with their tongues confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Christmas is a celebration of the many, many aspects of Christ and one of the 
clear aspects of Christ is that a king has been born. Our king has been born, and he has come to establish, really reestablish his kingdom. So I go back to Luke 1 and 33, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. Uh, can we talk about kingdom things today? It's important we understand kingdom things. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Uh, now let's go 700 years prior to the birth of Christ, to the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah tells us that a child will be born to a virgin, but immediately once he starts speaking about the birth of a child, he starts talking about the kingdom that the child will rule over. Over Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government. So now we are switching to the kingdom that he will rightly, justly rule over, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful. Everybody say, Wonderful. Wonderful. His name will be called Counselor. Say Counselor. His name will be called Mighty God. Say it with me. Everlasting Father. Say it. Prince of Peace. And of his government, of the increase of his government in peace, there will be no end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it, establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So in verse 7, the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. Amen. The birth of Christ is the birth of a king. And the introduction of a kingdom. I'll say the reintroduction of a kingdom because in God's original plan through Adam, he established Adam to establish a kingdom. And in that original kingdom, that was meant to be an extension of heaven into earth. Adam was to establish on earth what was already established in heaven. You understand. What was in heaven was supposed to come to earth. And Adam was supposed to establish on earth what was in heaven. This is why God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. God was explaining to Adam everything that the earth was supposed to be. And the earth was supposed to be a, a mirror of, a model of heaven. Come on. <laughs> Amen. But Adam threw it away. Adam had the first original kingdom on the earth. He was told to, to fill the earth and have dominion over the earth and to rule the earth. But he rejected that king, the Lord God Almighty, and gave it over to another king, small k, little g, Satan. Gave the kingdom of God away to a false king and the kingdom fell. And it would take a last Adam. It would take Jesus Christ being born into the earth to reestablish what God had intended from the beginning. A kingdom that would look like heaven but be on earth. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of heaven is meant to be established in the kingdom of earth. Now we know that in the millennial reign, that will be an actual reign and rule of Jesus Christ on the earth. But it has already started in the sense that the influence of heaven is in the earth today because you're in the earth today. And you are citizens of the kingdom. Hallelujah. We got to understand kingdom life, kingdom principles, what the kingdom is all about. One of the great scholars in the body of Christ that has taught us more about the kingdom than anybody else next to Jesus in the body of Christ is Miles Monroe. 
and he has done such extensive writing. He's in glory now, but he has done such extensive writing on kingdom understanding and helping us to understand what Jesus was talking about when, he, when he's talked about the kingdom. You see, the kingdom is not a, a theoretical thing. The kingdom is a kingdom. It is an actual kingdom where the king has dominion over a certain territory. So the will of the king and the way of the king and the desire of the king is is uh, transplanted into that area so the citizens, come on church, that's us, so the citizens begin to behave like the king. Now the reason Miles Monroe was so good at explaining this is because he was raised in Bermuda. And Bermuda is a territory of England. And so he said, let me explain to you how kingdom works. There is the king of England who took over or obtained Bermuda and made Bermuda a territory of England. Everything that was in England then came to Bermuda. The language came to Bermuda, the culture came to Bermuda, the education system came to Bermuda, the economy came to Bermuda. In other words, Bermuda looks exactly like England. That's why they drive on the left-hand side of the road. That's why they speak the King's English. That's why they have tea four times a day. Come on now. That's why they have an English culture in Bermuda. Why? The culture of England was transplanted to Bermuda. Come on, come on, and this is what is supposed to be happening now in the earth. All that is in heaven has come to earth through Jesus Christ, and the kingdom culture of heaven is to be established in the earth through us. Give me a better amen. Hallelujah. Say, I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. I speak the kingdom's language. I, have, I am part of the kingdom's economy. I observe the king's will. I desire to be a good citizen of the kingdom. A kingdom has a territory, a kingdom has a constitution, a kingdom has citizen, a kingdom has laws and rights and ethics, a kingdom has a culture, a kingdom has a language, a kingdom has economy, a kingdom has an army, the heavenly host, praise God, and we're part of that. Come on, we're part of that. We used to be part of another kingdom. Colossians, uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, Colossians 1 to 13 said that we are a part of the kingdom of darkness, but we've been translated into the kingdom of His dear Son. Yeah. Hallelujah. We were a part of that, but now we're a part of this. Hallelujah. Now, it's important to understand how kingdom works because that's all Jesus talked about. When Jesus preached, He preached the kingdom of God. In fact, if you will look with me in Luke chapter 4, verse 43, he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, because for this purpose I have been sent. When you understand kingdom, you understand that there is a kingdom way to think. There is a kingdom way to speak. There is a kingdom way to act. There's a kingdom way to live. There's a kingdom life. It's called the abundant life. Come on, church. There's a kingdom life that Jesus came to give to us. Hallelujah. So when Jesus preached kingdom, he was teaching us all the ways the kingdom operated what the blessings of the kingdom are, what the obligations of the kingdom are, what the constitution of the kingdom is, which is the Word of God. You hold it in your hand right now. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus preached kingdom. He said, I must preach. He said, I must preach the kingdom of God. For this purpose, I have been sent. And then when he wanted to help us understand what the kingdom was like, he taught us parables. He would say things like in Luke 13 and 20, what shall I like in the kingdom of God? It's like leaving 
unto which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until it was all leaven. So when he tried to teach us principles about the kingdom, he would use parables to teach those principles. And then when he wanted to teach us what the obligations of a citizen of, a king, of the kingdom was, he, w- he taught the Sermon on the Mount. And the Sermon on the Mount is all about how kingdom citizens behave. And he said, kingdom citizens do this. They seek first the kingdom of God, and all other things shall be added unto you. Oh, give me a big amen on that one. (laughs) What do you seek first? The kingdom of God. What should we seek first? The kingdom of God. Don't worry about the other stuff. Seek first the kingdom of God. All the other stuff will be added to your life. Hallelujah. That makes me want to say hallelujah. How about you? Praise the Lord. So Jesus taught about the kingdom of God. Jesus gave us revelation about the kingdom of God. Jesus sermonized about the kingdom of God. And then Jesus would demonstrate the kingdom of God. Usually there was a teaching first and then a demonstration after. Jesus would teach kingdom principles and then he would cast out devils. Jesus would teach kingdom principles and then he would heal the sick. Why would he do it? Because there's not supposed to be any devils in the kingdom. Not supposed to be any sickness in the kingdom. In fact, when he told his disciples, he commissioned them and he sent them out. And he says, now listen, you've been listening to me preach the kingdom of God on the earth. I want you to do exactly the same thing. I want you to go out and preach the kingdom. Luke 9 and 1, he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power. Everybody say power and authority. Everybody say authority over all demons. And to cure, come on somebody, this is what he gave his disciples. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? This is what he gave his disciples, authority and power over all devils and demons and to cure diseases. And then he sent them to teach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Hey, there's not supposed to be sickness in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. No devils in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We got authority over it. I said, we got authority over it. I said, no, we got to wait till heaven till we get rid of those devils and get our, our healing. No, 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 no. Jesus said, pray now, pray now. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. You don't have to wait to heaven. You get heaven into earth. You pray heaven into earth. How can you do it? Because you're a kingdom kid. Because you're a citizen of the kingdom. We want kingdom down here. Yeah, we're going to get kingdom up there. Of course we're going to get kingdom up there. But we're supposed to get kingdom down here because that's what Adam's assignment was. And the last Adam came to reestablish the assignment. Now we're full of assignment getting the kingdom of God in the earth today. Hallelujah. 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 That makes me want to shout. Hallelujah. And then this is what Jesus told them. If you kept reading that passage, this is what Jesus told them. When you heal the sick, tell them the kingdom of God just touched your life. Isn't that amazing? Healing and kingdom go hand in hand. When you heal the sick, Jesus said, tell them this. Isn't it amazing that Jesus wanted them to, you tell them this. You make them aware You make them know that the kingdom of God just touched their lives. So healing and kingdom. And and even those who don't believe in healing in the earth today, they don't believe in divine healing today. They'll still pray the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Well, Jesus said, if they're healed, tell them kingdom touch them. So if we pray thy kingdom come, shouldn't we also pray for healing? Doesn't it make sense? If kingdom is the, if healing is the touch of kingdom and we're praying thy kingdom come, shouldn't we be, be believing God that healing comes with the kingdom? Somebody help me preach this message. Somebody help me preach this message. Doesn't this all make sense? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now, one of, the, one of the lines that jumped off the page and into my spirit is the phrase, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Of the increase. Everybody say increase. increase. His kingdom is intended to increase. His kingdom is intended to increase, not to stagnate, not to diminish, but to increase unto the coming of the Lord. So we who are in the earth, us kingdom citizens, we who are in the earth are stewards over the increase of his kingdom. Don't you want to see his kingdom increase? Or would you rather see the kingdom of the world increase? or secularization increase, or humanization increase. No, we want to see the kingdom of God increase in the earth today. That's the desire of our heart. So, the prophet said, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. So, we should be mindful of increase of the Lord's kingdom in the earth. We should be thinking about that all all the time. The increase of his kingdom in size, in numbers, uh, in the size of his kingdom, in the numbers of his citizenry, in increase in influence, kingdom influence in the earth today. We should be mindful of increase of influence in the earth today. It also talks about the increase of peace, kingdom peace. We should be mindful of the, the, the increase of kingdom results in the earth today, of kingdom peace in the earth today. So when you're talking about the increase of the size of the kingdom, we're talking about the numbers of citizens. I am a citizen of the kingdom of God because I'm a born-again believer. How do you become a citizen? By being a born-again believer. If you're a born-again believer, you are a citizen in the kingdom of God. If you're a born-again believer, you are a child of the living God. You are a son, and that's not regarding gender, but you are a son, a child of the living God. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are a citizen in the kingdom of God. You are a member of the body of Christ. You are a part of the bride of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But we are citizens of the kingdom. And so we need to know how the kingdom operates. Well, to get into the kingdom, you believe. You believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth, whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. In, in John chapter 3, Nicodemus came to Jesus. And let's just turn there while we're in the Word and loving this time in the Word. John chapter 3, verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, verse 2, the man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher that's come from God. No one could do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus started talking about kingdom right away. He starts talking about kingdom. And Jesus said, verse 3, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So how do you see the kingdom of God? By being born again, born of the Spirit. So to get into the kingdom, it's very, very simple. Be born again. If you're born again, you're part of the kingdom of God. He goes on to say, back down to the 16th verse of the same chapter, John 3, 16, Jesus said to Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. We are believers. We're called believers because we believe something. We believe Jesus paid the price for our sins, glory to God. We don't have to pay the price for our sins. So in believing that he is our Savior, we are now saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's good news. I said, that's good news. We're called believers because believing is what we are really, really good at. We believe in Jesus. Say it out loud. I believe in Jesus. I'm a believer. And the Lord has commissioned us to share our belief. 
Everybody shares what they believe. Everybody shares what they believe. Everybody shares what they believe. Amen. <laughs> Debbie and I went to Washington one time. We got in the taxi cab to go to our hotel. And the taxi cab driver on that 40-minute drive spent the entire 40 minutes sharing what he believed. Everybody shares what they believe. I didn't want to hear a word of it. I heard all of it, but <laughs> he's, he believed it, so he shared it. Well, he was wrong about everything, but he still believed it. I happen to believe what's correct. How about you? I happen to believe the truth of the gospel. How about you? Come on, church. How about you? You believe, you share what you believe. Everybody does. I'm just going to encourage you in 2024, don't be shy. Be bold in the Lord. Be bold with what you share. Be bold with what you share because you actually got the truth. Everybody shares their junk and their lies and their misbeliefs. You got the truth. Let's talk about the truth. Let's talk about it in love, but let's talk about the truth. Glory to God. Let's share about eternal life. Let's share about the abundant life. Let's share about the meaningful life. Let's share about the connected life. Let's share about the valuable life. Let's share about the honorable life and the Bible-wise life and the guilt-free life and the condemnation-free life and all the blessings of the gospel life. Let's share it. Hallelujah. So it's when someone asks you, come on, how, why are you always happy? Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> I believe Jesus died for my sins. I'm a born-again believer. You can be too. Glory to God. Happy, happy, happy. When people ask you, how can you be so peaceful in these crazy times? Let me tell you how I got the Prince of Peace living on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Amen. When people say, how come you didn't blow up and, and respond to that offense that they, they said to you? Well, let me tell you what, Jesus bore my offenses, and I, I'm just walking in love now. I'm just walking in love. I'm not going to take offense. Glory to God, Jesus. Everybody say, Jesus, Jesus. So because of what we believe is so grand and glorious, we should be inviting people all the time. Come on, come on, let me share the good news with you. Let me share you this wonderful gospel with you. Invite you into the kingdom of God, eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you, I'm going to free you up right now. I'm going to free you up right now to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not your responsibility to make them believe. It's just your responsibility to share the truth. Amen. Jesus. Jesus put it this way when he was talking about parables, talking about the kingdom. He said, it's like a sower that goes to sow. And he talks about broadcasting the seed. In other words, just casting seed. It's called broadcasting seed. Just casting the seed. The seed is the word. It falls on different soils. Not every soil received the word. The word is the word. It was good seed, I promise you. It was good seed. But some fell on good ground. Say, I'm the good ground. Yeah, you are. You're the good ground. Glory to God. You, you can't help it if some are thorny, some are wayward, some are stony. That's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is just get the seed out there. Come on, just get the seed out there. And, and can I let you in on a little secret? Can I let you in on a little secret? Soils change over time. Amen. <laughs> That rocky, stony, hardened soil, it can soften. You think, no, seed will never get in there. Yeah, it will. Come on, yeah, it will. I said, yeah, it will. Because I could tell you about a guy named Saul who came a guy named Paul because he met Jesus on the Damascus Road. The most hardened heart can change. I won't ask you to raise your hand, but I know there's probably one or two or every single one of us who had a hardened heart against God at one point or another, but somehow the gospel light shined on our heart and softened our heart, and we received the word, and we said, that's what I've been looking for all my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if we're talking about the increase of his government, let's talk about the increase of his citizenry of the government. And he just has to be born again to make more citizens. And then they learn the principles of the kingdom. So we should be inviting people all the time. 
inviting, inviting, inviting. The most effective form of evangelism is friendship evangelism. Hallelujah. I mean, we can advance all sorts of media campaigns and all that kind of stuff, but really it is one-to-one, eyeball-to-eyeball, friendship-to-friendship evangelism that really, truly works. Amen? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I want, to, I want to close on the increase of influence of the kingdom. This is very, very important. And I referred to a parable a little earlier in, in Luke 13, in verse 20. Jesus said, what shall I like in the kingdom? It is like leaven. It, now we're talking about the increase of influence. A kingdom should increase in influence. Christians should increase in influence. Somebody's going to influence somebody. We should be influencing them more than they influence us. Well, let's listen to the parable right here. He said to them, I'm in Luke 13 and 20, To what shall I liken the kingdom of God? Verse 21, It's like leaven, which a woman took, hid in three measures of meal, till it was all leavened or leaven. You put in a little bit and it gets through everything. It gets through everything. Now that works both ways. Hey, he's talking about the kingdom. The kingdom can get into the earth and fill the earth. Or the earth can get into the church and fill the church. It works both ways. I've seen it both ways. I've seen churches greatly influenced by the world where they start ignoring the Bible and start listening to the morality and the mores of the world. That's not a good thing. But, 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 Jesus said the, the kingdom should be leavening, should be influencing the world. I believe the kingdom of God should be influencing this world because Jesus taught us the kingdom of God should be influencing the world. I think kingdom principles should influence our school, should influence our government, should influence our politics, should influence our economy, should influence our army, should influence our citizenry, should influence our business, should influence our media, should influence our arts and entertainment, should influence all the institutions of our nation, should influence our marriages, should influence our marriages, should influence our churches. I'm running out of air. But I haven't run out of kingdom. I believe the kingdom of God should influence every area of our nation. I truly believe that. It must. It must. The kingdom of God was never designed to just go sit in the corner. We're leaven. We're to leave in the whole lump. This nation was founded on on Christian principles. That's how we've gotten through some of the hardest and most difficult things, injurious things in this nation because the Holy Ghost has led people, holy people, to say we're not putting up with sin. We're not putting up with injustice. We want Jesus in the land. We want to do it God's way. Come on, church. We want to do it God's way. Now, I'm not saying that the United States has to be a theocracy. We'll have a theocracy when Jesus comes back. But I say the United States cannot and should not ignore its foundation stones. uh, And we should honor our Christian heritage because in our Christianity, there is an increase of his government and his peace. And what we want is peace. Come on, church. What we want is peace. What is sadly lacking in our land today and in the world today is peace. Seems like we've got wars on every hand. Seems like we've got strife on every hand. Seems like everybody is at everybody's throat. We need God's peace in the earth today. Hallelujah. 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 When God told Adam, and I'll close on this. When God told Adam, he said, listen, this is my charge to you and Eve. He said, I want you to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over it. Now, that doesn't sound like Adam go sit in a corner 
We're just going to let things go the way they're, they're supposed to go. He said, no, that's not it. He says, Adam, you're in charge of this thing. And you make sure this thing looks like heaven. You make sure this thing looks like heaven. Amen. The church of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God in the earth today, was never designed to go sit in a corner and just be quiet and wait until Jesus comes back and let the, the naysayers and the doubters and the unbelievers rule the roost. No, 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 no. We are in the earth to influence the earth for Jesus Christ, and we are to establish his kingdom principles in the earth today to usher in kingdom and peace. I said to usher in kingdom and peace. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from heaven above. Sweep over my spirit. In billows I pray. What's the last sentence of that song? Something, something, billows of love. <laughs> Forever I pray. That's it, Debbie. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> peace. Everybody say peace. Come up, sweetheart. Come up with me. Bring your microphone. <clears throat> I'll be singing in the car. Wherever we go, I'm singing something. And Debbie will always say, those aren't the words. <clears throat> no matter what I'm singing, she knows all the words to everything. She said, those aren't the words. I said, they are now, Debs. They are now. I'm feeling it from the Holy Ghost. These are the new words to this song. Stand with me if you would. Peace. Peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father. Come on, everybody sing it out. Above. Ah, very good. You're very clever. Thank you. Sweet something the world does not have. You have peace that passes all understanding living on the inside of you. The world needs it. Are you willing to share it? You have something the world does not have, eternal life. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Are you willing to share an invitation to eternal life? Don't worry about the result, the feedback, or how it's going to be received. You are only responsible to share the seed. To share the seed. I think Debbie and I have knocked about on every door in Gainesville in our younger days. We've knocked on them all, going door to door. Can I tell you about Jesus? Can I share the gospel with you? Had a lot of doors closed in our face. But some were saved. And some are written in the Lamb's book of life now. They may be in heaven waiting for us to say thank you for coming to our door. The most important thing we'll ever do is increase his kingdom by inviting people to come to Jesus. I'm praying 2024 is a year of invitation. It's a year of invitation. Just sowing the seed, getting it out there, getting it out there. God loves you. God died for you. God seeks after you to invite you into his family once again. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray over you right now, and then I'm going to release you to have the best Christmas you've ever had in your life. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Debbie and I come into agreement as we pray over the Grandview family and all our family and friends watching online. And we pray that in 2024, that there is such a sweet love 
for people, all people, that we would so love them that we just have to share the gospel with them with a smile and a, and a kind word to say, God loves you. God wants you. You can have a God-led life. Help us, Lord. Give us, each one of us, a spirit of boldness to do just that in Jesus' holy name. And the church said, amen and amen. And I say to you, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the church said, amen. God bless you all. Very, very Merry Christmas to you. We pray blessings over your home and over your Christmas celebrations. Amen.